Welcome to the office. It's Lagos Talks 91.3 FM. My name is Michelle Aga. Remember, we do this every Thursday from 4.30 p.m. to 5 p.m. A whole 30 minutes of sitting down with highly skilled experts, professionals, HR professionals to be precise. And we bring the office to you because we discuss issues that concerns your growth, work ethics, professional you know, growth and, um, you know, improvement, ways that you can really be at par with the trends of today. And today we have a ma- an, another amazing guest who is joining us today. Before I tell you her name, I'd like you to know a few things about her. Now, she's a professional facilitator and trained team development consultant. She's an internationally accredited, accredited and certified professional transition coach and a British psychological from the and the British Psychological Society certified occupational and psychometric test user. She has over 15 years of experience in business development, training, team building and development as well as corporate coaching. She specializes in transforming high potential individuals to dynamic leaders. She's a lead coach and managing director of TBA Consult and has facilitated several programs in topics such as team building and development, coaching and mentoring skills, amongst others. She's also trained individuals as certified coaches and serves as a leadership transition coach. She's a founding board member of the Nigerian chapter of the world-renowned International Coaching Federation and currently serves as the chapter president. Ladies and gentlemen, my guest today is Ms. Sochi Ilumechina, PCC, Managing Director and Lead Coach, TBA Consult. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Michelle. Yes. It's great to be here. Thank you. It's such an honor to have you here. Your portfolio is super, super <laughs> um I mean, just impressive, and we're very happy that we can learn from you today. You know, the office is a, is a place where everyone can learn a thing or two from, not just HR professionals, but also employees as well can come learn tips, mm-hmm. skills, how to speak, communication skills, soft skills, ways that they can improve and be better in whatever they do. And uh, this is proudly brought to you by the Chattered Institute of Personal Management in partnership with Lagos Talks 91.3. Today, we'll be talking about coaching. Uh-huh. Yes, we'll be talking about coaching. I've heard so much about coaching. Sometimes you ask questions and someone's like, get a coach, yeah. ask a coach. Yeah. You need a yeah. coach. What is coaching? Okay. I mean, I hear mentors. I know what mentors are, but I don't mm-hmm. really know if it's the same. So what is coaching? And, you know, that's the interesting thing that a lot of people, you know, into, what was the word? Interchange the words coaching yeah. and mentoring. But mentoring, I, I'll go into mentoring later, but really what we're here for is coaching. So really coaching is a partnership. And mm-hmm. basically, according to the International Coaching Federation, you know, you mentioned I'm the, I'm the president of the Nigerian chapter. It is a partner. It basically is partnering with clients or maybe just even say individuals mm-hmm. in a thought provoking and inspire, you know, inspiring process, okay. really a creative process to inspire individuals to tap into and maximize their potential, basically right. personal and professional potential. So maybe to simplify it, um, I like to even go a little bit back into the history of what coaching was. Really, it's about well, if I were to just say, coaching is really about taking you from where you are to where you need to be. Mm. So the word coach actually came from, you know, it's, if I to, I don't want to go bore you with the details, yeah. but it really is about, you know, it's about from a town that used to create carriages, and you know, if you see a carriage, it's really moving you from where you are. If you enter a coach in a mm. bus or a train mm. or whatnot. You know the destination, Mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily know how to get there. So when you get into the coach or the train, it takes you from where you are to where you need to be. Wow. So it's a partnership. It's a partnership between the coach and the clients. Absolutely. Okay. So is it a skill that can be learned and how? Do you really learn how to be a coach or are coaches born? Ah, no, you can learn. It's a skill. It's a, so there are two pathways. Okay. So there's the skills. So some organizations, well, and one of many other organizations that I've worked with, introduce coaching skills as part of their people development, leadership development. And it's a simplified, basically understanding how to impact others, getting individuals to, to tap into their own potential. In fact, one of the fundamental principles as coaches and even in coaching is that Everybody is fundamentally adequate. Okay. You have the potential. You have the, the answers that lie within. And so our role as a, as a leader using coaching skills, because like I said, coaching skills can be trained. You can be trained on that. And it's really about getting the individual to you know, improve performance, asking them. You learn the skills of listening, 
of open-ended questioning, the mm-hmm. right type of questioning that mm-hmm. empowers people. So those are the skills. Some of those sessions can be two, three days. Sometimes they have it as a leadership training module, a module within a leadership training. Mm-hmm. So those are the simple coaching skills you can learn and use it in your day-to-day interaction. I'm but just then, wondering how people know that they want to be coaches. Do you, ah. do you see the signs within you? Is it like a talent that needs to be developed Or anyone Mm -hmm. can just really sit down and be like, you know what, I think I want to be a coach and I'm just going to learn how to be a coach. So, um, so if you, so, so what you're asking is, do you, I think, how do I say it's like a learn, it's like a, sometimes I even feel like it's a calling. So Mm. I also train people to become certified coaches. So I work with organizations as well to train and develop their internal coaching capacity. And really the people that they select are people that are passionate. So if you are passionate about people's transformation, Mm. about growing individuals, somebody even once said that they are, that they feel that they were called, they're like a farmer. Mm -hmm. So they like to see people grow. They like to see people blossom. Yeah. Blossom. So yeah. if you're that type of person that loves to see people grow and blossom and you're passionate about that, then you can, you know, take the deeper and longer path, which is the certification path in which you now you're actually learning not just the skills, but the cognitive process, really how you think, how a coach thinks to be able to transform people really from the inside out in a sustainable manner. Right. So it's a lot longer. It's a lot more... Um, but it's it's a fine and, and you know to be trained to be to become a coach you yourself have to be coached so you have to experience right, the process right. as well as in order to be able to to give yeah in fact there's a philosophy that says to be light no to give light you have to be light, be light yeah so you have to go through the process experience it as an individual wow. and then be able to offer it so how do i know i need a coach in my life <laughs> You know, um, according to, uh, you know, everybody needs a coach. According to, uh, what's the name, Bill Gates and, you know, the former you know, CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt they, Schmidt, they said that everyone needs a coach. But I would highlight specific areas. So, like, for instance, if you feel that you have a goal mm. that, you know, you want to achieve, but it's a bit hazy, it's a bit mm. blurry, mm. you can't really see clearly get a coach to partner with you because the coach comes in not to tell you what to do. Like I said, we believe everything is lies within you. You have the answer. So it's really to serve as a thought partner, a think, um, a, a sounding board, somebody to help to guide and just really in a non, what's the word I'm calling, um, a non judgmental environment. Also, if, um, right now we are under so much pressure in the country everybody is dealing in fact in the world let's just even leave that aside yeah everybody is dealing with so many different issues and it's so easy especially in the workplace you know as much as we say you know so when you walk into the office drop all your personal issues, issues yeah. let them go this is the workplace you know keep separate everything there's no way there are times that your challenges will still interfere in your in in the workplace you find probably what you may find is that people now are snapping at each other more mm. there's a lot more there are people are a lot testier and in the agitated office, yeah. and more agitated as much because there are so many we are dealing with you know cues you know people are struggling to get petrol there are so many different issues that we are dealing with as a country as individuals in our different lives so when you have a coach the coach helps to create that safe space for you to almost like you know clear out all the clutter in your head in a, like I said, non-threatening, non-judgmental, quiet space for you to just almost empty out all your thoughts and Mm. clear them out and separate (coughs) them and identify the impact of certain things on how you show up in the workplace. Are there other benefits of having a coach? Of course. I mean, you know, if you are, I mean, I know for me, for instance, I, I tend to, I used to, well, I mean, it's something I, I self-coach myself on it all the time, procrastination. So mm. if you procrastinate a lot, you have, you know, you have plans, you tend, tend not to follow through on them. A coach would be definitely helpful for you to support you in that process. I know that I've seen in organizations that they've seen the impact of coaching on their leaders. Mm, okay. There are some, you know, especially if you have, I don't like to use the word, you know, challenging leaders that okay. tend to, um, you know, what's the word? I don't want to use the word toxic, but that can difficult. be difficult. Can be difficult. Yeah. Can be you know challenging. And the impact of coaching on them, I've seen cases that once they were able to identify that they have that power within them, that nobody can make you angry, nobody can push your buttons. You have that control. You have that self control. It's really about once they were able to identify that the way they were able to that shift in behavior impacted the team members because the leaders especially in the organizational space the leaders you set the tone of the you set the tone you set the climate 
So by how you show up, if you're, you know, there's a, if you, how you show up impacts people around you. So right. if you're able to change your behavior through coaching, through this partnership, thought provoking process, you are able to impact the people that work within you. And that ultimately translates to better business performance and so on. Right. Yeah. So in, in summary, would you say that coaching is necessary or it's just an overused word? Ah, you see is now. It, is it really necessary? <laughs> Do we really so, need coaches? I mean, okay, so Michelle. Yes. You're asking a coach that question. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know what? I would okay, so I would say this. Um yes, it is very necessary. Like okay. I said, everyone needs a coach. Um, but espe- even as an individual looking if you're looking for a coach, for instance, and if an organization is looking for a coach, for you for instance, first it's very important for you to identify what is it what's in it for me why do i want to coach so do your homework do the research what do i want to gain at the end of this journey right. what would success look like for me mm. so at the beginning of every coaching conversation you need to have a goal in mind absolutely you need to have a goal so which is one of the benefits mm. as well it helps to clarify your goals so as organizations as well if you are looking for a coach for a particular individual one thing to take note of is that coaching is not remedial it's not to fix anybody we are not coming in as therapists. We're not coming here to advice or anything. Yeah. It is really about investing in an individual. So it's really moving you from optimal, sorry, from functional to optimal. Right. So if an individual, if an organization says, you know, we are talking in the office now, right? So if an individual, an organization says, okay, this person, I see potential in them. I would like for them to get co- a coach. Then I first of all identify what do you want them to achieve? What is the goal? As a leader, line manager of this individual, what do you want them to achieve? What would success look like for them? And how would that fit into the big picture? And not only that, the individual that's being coached, give let them know that is an investment in them. Because I've gotten clients that say they should be they say you should coach me that you know, coach, oh yeah, you know, because it's not very clear. They mm. think that they are being fixed. Mm. So it's really important for them to understand, buy into the idea of that the coaching is a, is a function of their performance. They want You want them to take them to a higher level of pro- productivity and performance. And that way also, both the organization or the sponsor and the individual being coached have mapped out goals, objectives, you know, clear um, outlines on what outcomes mm-hmm. of what they want the session or the coaching sessions to incorporate or to bring about mm-hmm. and if and so until that is clearly articulated and done that is when you see that is a necessity now if you don't do that then it can be an overuse or if you just say oh i have a coach just for the sake of having a coach then without clear outcomes then it would, it would become a cliche right. but you want to make sure that it is important that what are the outcomes and when you are, have clearly articulated those outcomes then there's nothing but success coming your way. And the thing is, as individuals being coached, you are to do the work. You know, it's the agenda of the client. Right. So you have to be hungry. It's important for you to be hungry. And this is your time. You have most most of my sessions are like 60 minutes, some 90 minutes. You have that one hour with, you know, with your coach, dedicated time to really map out what are my goals? What is it I want to do? This is, okay, this is the outcomes of the last session. These are the goals I, I set out the last session. When I come back into the next session, okay, I didn't achieve this. What is the learning in that? Okay, what is the thing that you can do differently? Mm-hmm. Because it's a partnership. You know, I said that yeah, earlier. It's yeah. really like, I was just saying, almost like hand holding and, mm-hmm. and partnering. But you are the pilot, you are the champion, you are the one that's leading the way. Right. Right. Yeah. This is very, very, I mean, anyone who recommends a coach for, for you definitely sees a lot of potential in you and wants Absolutely. you to be better. So, I, Absolutely. Yeah, and, and you have to, you have to now believe in yourself that you can be that person if you're ready to partner with a coach to achieve that goal but i just want to know are there different types of coaches or one a single coach can cover every area how does it really work do you need to be a specialist in this area or Mm -hmm. as a coach you can cover every area so um i would say that there are different types of coaches they are, we call them niches. So, for instance, I'm a leadership transition coach. So I work with specifically with individuals who are moving into new leadership roles. And, of course, it can be overwhelming. Mm. How do I manage all of that, yeah. this transition and yeah. this process? So, And I also do leadership coaching. Mm-hmm. So then there are leadership coaches, there are executive coaches, there are career coaches, there are wellness coaches. So for as an individual, it's, you know, reach out, you know, if you reach out to a coach, you know, Oh, like I said, do your homework. What is First of all, what is it that I want to achieve at the end of this session? Yes, as a coach, 
if somebody comes to me, for instance, that they, I also do a bit of team coaching. Mm -hmm. So if somebody, for instance, comes to me and says um, that, you know, I'm trying to think of a career coach, for instance, they, they, they want a career coach. I can work in the space of it, but, and even as a leadership transition, sometimes some personal issues come up because as much as, like I said earlier, as much as you try to, you know, separate things, these things can be holding you back and preventing you from moving forward. So yeah. I want to just do a quick exercise with you, if you don't mind. No problem. So if you just put your fingers in your rib right now, yes. right? Yes. And just push it hard, though. Okay. And if people are listening, you know, people listening, just try and do this exercise with me. So as I'm talking, so as a leadership transition coach, as I said earlier on, I support people, I move people through a process from beginning to end, and I help them. How, what are you thinking at the moment as I'm doing that? Nothing. Nothing? Mm-hmm. What was happening with your fingers? It was just hurting. It was hurting. Because I was pushing it in. <laughs> you, was it, hurt, it was hurting you? Just a little. Just a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so that finger and the rib could be the distractions, okay. right? Because I could barely concentrate. You could barely concentrate. And what you were saying. Aha. Uh-huh. So even me as I was talking, I don't think I was even making much sense. <laughs> but you know, the thing is, that, that is why. So even when your clients come to you or clients come to me for a specific thing or I, I, I have a challenge with my team or whatnot, the outside world are those that finger and the rib are those distractions. Mm. And so as a coach, the role is to help you release those, you know, the finger, those distractions. Yeah. So like I said, if I'm a, I think if I'm a career coach, for example, and somebody says, oh, I need something in life, career is still under life. So mm. there are different aspects of mm. it. I've seen cases of people who come in to do executive coaching, but they're having challenges in their marriages. And that's also, Distract. of course, if there's pressure in the in the in the household is going to affect the work the workplace if there's pressure in the workplace it's going to affect the household so as much as we try to separate them they kind of into you know they're interwoven right but yes if for instance i get a client that i know that i i don't typically do relationships per se Mm -hmm. i can and i've done like i said i've done in the space of team but i have my teams and people that i refer to to be able to do that so we coaches we have our like we mentioned international coaching federation that we connect and we are able to support each other and refer but there are so many different niches wow 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 so much to learn what is is. the coaching industry like here are there many coaches like you um yeah um so uh in icf the international coaching federation there are about 80 over about 80 coaches now and growing in nigeria in nigeria okay. um so and like i said in different niches so there are quite a few so if there's any you know of course if anybody needs a coach they know you know we, you can attend send a message to our email how and do you how do you even find a coach so, I mean, I'll suggest that you can go to the coaching uh, icfnigeria.org website and then you can, you know, you can okay. lead it from there. Yeah. Um, that is how you find, you know, reach out to people like me. Yeah. We are always, we are all connected, we are interwoven and we can always connect. We're happy to work with individuals. In well, so what is the difference between a coach and a mentor? Aha, now that's a good one. Yes, <laughs> okay. I've always wanted to know. You, always, you know, people always ask that question. So, you know, mentoring is more of a, um, you know, I've walked this path. This is, is this is also is there's also a personal relationship, but it's a little bit more directive. Okay. So I would say that I've done so let's say you want to become a coach, for instance, mm-hmm. and you want me to be to mentor you. Okay, I'll say, Okay, this is the school that I went to train right. at. This is how I did this. Oh, and if there are any okay. issues along the way, I will be sharing a lot of my personal journey with you for you to take tips on and to learn from it. Some mentors actually use coaching skills questions and so on to be able to support you you know you as a mentee in the process coaching as i said we don't tell so it, my role is just to is to ask questions to get you to really think because when the answers and the solutions also come from you it is more empowering the shift if there's a sh- there's a shift in thinking there's a shift in cognition you are able you are more bought into the process right. so not to discount mentoring at all because it's a valuable tool it's you know especially when you are doing you know dealing with high potential staff in organizations as well is a valuable tool to be able to get them up to maximize you know and strengthen your organizational you know leadership pipeline but pairing that also with coaching is would be amazing if i that's i have some people who are coaches and serve as mentors to individual right. so using that com- very i mean i've done that that's power, that's a powerful combination because yeah you also know the times in which you can just let the person come to the solutions themselves identify look this thing 
I know the answer. Give me some space. Let me think it through. And me as a coach, I'm there to support you, to mm. observe, to partner, to ask those questions. Okay, you've set this goal. How about we stretch it a little bit? How about we challenge you to achieve that? And then if I want to pull in my mentoring skills, then I can say, okay, so this is the path I took. Now, throwing it back to you, what do you think would be best and most efficient and effective for you? So it's really about, so mentoring, people use it hand in hand, but mentoring is really about hand-holding, sharing experiences. Um, this is my path. Follow, you can walk this path mm -hmm. with me. Coaching is more like we are partners. I don't know. I If I can coach somebody who is in a completely different field, medical doctor, it's not about me knowing mm -hmm. and me being a subject matter expert in that field. It's really about your learning, your growth, your unleashing of your potential. Right. Yeah. Wow. 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 So <laughs> much, so much, so much to learn. Yeah. Um. What uh, Do you think Nigerians, since there are just about very few coaches here in the country, about 80 of them, like you said, do you think Nigerians are very much aware of the importance of having a coach and also organizations mm -hmm. as well? How responsive are Nigerians to the idea of getting a coach? I have to say, well, since um, I'm in the corporate space, okay. I can really speak more to the corporate space. But in my experience, since I became a coach in 2015 or so, right. or 2014, anyway, but I've seen the transition from 2014 to, to now, date, and right. it has been an amazing change. In fact, when, when we first started, it was, oh, coaching, that's a nice to have. Is it cliche? You know, like what you, like what you yeah. asked me before, is it really necessary? Oh, that's a soft thing. Mm. But then, especially after COVID, people have identified that, you know, the, there are some staff that just need, they're not in the state of, you know, there's this term that WHO came up with recently, I think, after COVID languishing, okay. that you are not in the state of depression, but you're not also performing optimally. And that's where coaching really comes in mm. because you know that they could do so much more. And so I've seen that organizations have identified that this is a skill that we've been missing and that we need to hire bringing external coaches to do that. I'm working with some organizations too that are building their internal coaching capacity and that really spiked after COVID. Mm -hmm. So it was really at this point that, look, yes, we have the top executives that are getting external coaches, we, but we still need coaching for people across the organization and maybe we are not able to, uh, you know, to pay for so many external coaches. Let's develop our in-house capacity. So I have organizations, banks, um, oil and gas companies building their internal capacity so that they can be able to grow and support their staff through different changes, through transitions, through growth and leadership, through teams, all sorts of, of stuff. So definitely... It is growing, it is expanding, mm. and you know we continue to we continue to work with people and and look forward to the opportunities. All right. So, what's the success rate so far? I mean, when people finally get coaches, then what? So, as I said, I don't have I don't have a, a what's what's the word I'm looking for? I don't have a statistics in terms of the success rate per se. But I would say, I mean, you I would say like ninety nine percent of organizations that have gotten coaches have seen the benefits 99 or maybe around 90 some 37 percent or so have, have seen successes in 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 coaching um as i said if you as an individual are committed to the process mm -hmm. you will you will get success so again so even once you make your app so most sessions are like i said 60 minutes and most of them are maybe some people say three sessions some people say six coaching sessions Commit to the time, commit to the process. When you say that this is the outcome, this is the goal, this is a, this is the task I'm going to do leading me to that particular goal, follow through on it. Once you are able, you as a client, once you are focusing and you are following through on your tasks and on your goals, you and your coach holds you accountable, then there's a success. Mm -hmm. Naturally, there'll be success. Sometimes it may change. Your goals may change along the way. But the most important part is that you have also made that conscious decision to make the adjustments, to make the amendments along the journey. So I, you know, if you see cases of it not being successful, it's either it wasn't a professional coach, you know, who has mm -hmm. gone through the detail because the training is about six to ten months, mm -hmm. even some of them a year. So it's either the person hasn't gone through that detail shift and training or the individual in the coaching journey wasn't fully committed to right. it. Yeah, right. 
All right, you have been listening. This is The Office on Lagos Talks 91.3. My guest today is Sochi. She's a professional facilitator and a trained team development consultant. She's an internationally accredited and certified professional transition coach and a British Psychological Society certified occupational and psychometric test user. You can join the conversation if you have questions around coaching, you want to learn how to coach, or maybe you need a coach. If you have any questions whatsoever, you can join the conversation, share your thoughts, share your question, and give your submission. Phone lines are 0809-191-3913, 0809-222-0913, or 0809-234-5913. And on the landline numbers, you can call 015150913, 015150913. Do not forget to tweet at Lagos Talks 913. That is at Lagos Talks 913. Or send a message to our WhatsApp platform, 0809-234-5913. Coaching, coaching, coaching. We've, we've understood right now the necessity of getting a coach okay. it's not a cliche apparently and it's <laughs> yeah. more serious than we thought and now we have a deep understanding when when we think of the word coach mm-hmm. now we know what it entails yes it's serious business it is it is because that's why it's important like i said you know it's you mm. map out the goals you map out the objectives what does i always say what does success look like for you at the end of the conversation because otherwise it'll just be a gisting session. Right. <laughs> so it's you not. want to, which is not effective yeah. for both you as the coach and you as a client. Right. It doesn't, you know, it's a, you're wasting people's time. Yeah. So really be clear on what is the outcomes. What are, what are the outcomes? Very right. important. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank My you. guest is Ms. Sochi Ilomechina. She's the managing director and lead coach at TBA Consults. Do you have any final words before we go? Um, I think, you know, you know, like I said earlier, everybody needs a coach. Um, you'd be amazed at the, you know, people that, you know, that actually see coaching people, everybody needs a coach. And, but do your homework, as I say, you know, what is it? What are the outcomes? What would success look like for you as an organization to who are the people that have that potential? So note that it's not a remedial where it's not remedial effort mm. it's who are the people that have potential to succeed what is holding them back and look for a coach do your homework reach out to the ICA reach out to myself you know if you're looking for a coach in a particular um, niche and then also be committed and, and enjoy the process mm. and just you know it's a, it's a fantastic and if you're also interested in being a coach it is an amazing journey I know I've I'm constantly learning as I go, grow and go and I grow. Mm-hmm. And I know that my 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 previous life, I wouldn't even be comfortable sitting here yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. before I even went through coaching myself. Mm-hmm. So it is an amazing journey. So thank you so much for joining us. We hope you can come back next time and share more with us as regards mm-hmm. your profession and ways that we generally can benefit and be better with good coaching and move us forward to our next level in whatever ways we're trying to develop our lives. Thank you for joining us.